Oh hi, I'm the heretic. So on April 7, 2018, it was reported that a chemical attack killed about 70 people and injured 500 others in the Syrian suburb of Douma. I say reported because our only source that the attack happened is the White Helmets, who are about as reliable a source on events in the Syrian Civil War as Kent Brockman. The Russians and Syrians say the attack never happened. One America News' is Pearson Sharp went to Duma to see what happened and talked to the residents. According to Sharp, the attack didn't happen and was staged by the Syrian rebels and the White Helmets. But apparently, according to the person who's challenging this claim, the U.S. bombs were supposed to incinerate the traces of gas so children didn't die. They dropped bombs on a suburb to stop children from dying. They dropped bombs on a suburb to stop ch The problem is that this video sucked. I mean, it's really, really bad. But don't take our word for it. Toilet Ward, I think you just screwed the proverbial pooch and made your own shell hardline in the sand of your viewer base. Now you'll have to rethink why you still call yourself a man. How disappointing you've turned out to be a shell for the MSN narrative. Happy to lose your faith, idiot. John Ward, you're exposed douche. Three likes on my comment in just two minutes. New title for this video, John Ward and John Ward's career. Whoa, 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 John. You know I love you, homie. And granted, this outlet is really sloppy here. However, please don't tell me that you buy the official story hook, line, and sinker. It just doesn't make any sense for the sod to take those actions and false flags are a real thing. This video exposes you more than OAN. Thanks, John. The MSN narrative. Assad wins his war using conventional weapons. The U.S. announces that it is leaving Syria. Assad shrewdly chooses this exact moment to commit an atrocity that will not only make the U.S. stay in Syria, but also demand retaliation. And you actually buy this? John Ward, you need to actually do some research. But maybe the like-dislike ratio means nothing. Maybe he got mass disliked. Who knows? Maybe the Assad regime has special weapons that can erase matter and chemical residue from existence. Maybe One America News accidentally finds irreputable proof that the chemical attack not only happened, but that Assad's government was responsible, despite all evidence to the contrary. I could keep an open mind. Hit it! We do want to take you live now to Syria. This is One America News Network. Never mind that it's unsurmountably Sisyphean for them to match their own name to their own acronym because sh man, these jukebox heroes finally landed themselves the scoop that will make them a household name. Well, this bodes poorly. Already poisoning the well with inane references of what I can loosely define as jokes. Oh, I noticed it right away. He's gish galloping. It's a tactic that pseudo-intellectuals and used car salesman types use when they don't have a compelling case for their arguments, so they just speak really quickly in, in an attempt to overload your senses. And believe me, this is foreshadowing. They're words, of course, because anyone other than an OAN employee would describe this oh my god get it away from me travesty as a donkey pride parade on its way to the glue factory. So. We want to announce that uh, One American News has an exclusive discovery. We went to uh, Duma today. We got exclusive access. Jokes about the Democrat Party aside, we're one and a half minutes in. Where do we get the proof? Can you at least pretend to be interested in what OAN has found? Especially since, according to the title of your video, they prove your point? Uh, and we were brought into the town of Duma where the alleged chemical attack happened. This ineffable f head is Pearson Sharp, and there must be some kind of cosmic fruit pattern cycling through the names of the world's worst journalists, because this bottom-heavy moron might have actually just pulled off the heretofore thought and possible task of unseating Don Lemon as the worst journalist of the year. If you know anything about my channel, you now have an idea of how unimaginably awful this is about to get. As a quick aside, I know I'm intentionally stretching the pronunciation of Pearson's name to make the pun fit, but there is literally no lie I could tell that would come within even the speed of light constricted diameter of the visible universe through the level of malignantly terrible journalism you're about to see. It almost makes me want to go back and just stare at a screen cap of the pig nose part-time waitress who set up this segment. Wow, that's two whole minutes into a 20 minute video and you have yet to even so much as address any of the counterclaims, let alone make any arguments. You can string syllables together, we get it. We're all impressed by your ad hominems. You know the worst part? I couldn't make you look even more of an asshole if I tried. Stop wasting our time and get to the substance already. But that would rob you of finally getting proof positive that there was indeed a chemical attack in Duma and it was indeed conducted by Assad. Thank you! We were brought in uh, with a government escort. So Pearson Sharp, stalwart field investigator extraordinaire, leads off this 10 minute exclusive discovery, yes that's sarcasm, by quickly admitting that his exclusive access, yes that's sarcasm too, was chaperoned to the site of the chemical attack in Duma like a helpless baby by, yes you're understanding this correctly, the very army that's accused of carrying out the attack. Which is the exact point at which any journalist evolved beyond a single celled organism would have said, well this was a waste of time, wasn't it? I'll be saying the exact thing by the end of this video, won't I? 
Now, I understand your skepticism. You think these military escorts are handlers and will only allow Pierce and Sharp to see what the Syrian government wants him to see. You're not wrong, per se, but you aren't right either. The fact that the escorts are there proves nothing. You're forgetting about the whole ongoing civil war thing and that there might be rebel cells in a town that was only recently liberated and a foreign journalist might need protection. Nah, that would go against your preconceived conclusions, and that's not allowed. In fact, the military escort doesn't actually prove anything, doesn't even prove that this story isn't an exclusive take. But Pearson Sharp, ever in pursuit of the coveted mantle of stupidest fruit and slash or near fruit pun named useful idiot, apparently took a long, hard, calculating look at the heavily armed murderers and concluded, yeah, the victims are definitely gonna be straight with me with these guys around, and off he rode into that happy sunset of unmatchable ignorance to brilliantly produce free of charge genocidal Syrian propaganda. John Ward. Since you're having trouble being concise with your arguments, let me help. Assad military escorts will deter people from speaking honestly about the chemical attack to any journalist. See? That wasn't so hard. Yep, because the Syrian government is really gonna murder a bunch of civilians right in front of journalists working on behalf of a decently sized news network as a deterrent from speaking against an incident which Assad had no motive to have committed. Try again. It's clear that on some level, this once in an iteration of an oscillating universe buffoon knows how obscenely ridiculous his own company ending exclusive really is. He parrots the word alleged with all the conviction of a North Korean cheerleader. Even the f***ing camera does a double take as if to say, is this f***ed hard for real? We're four minutes in and so far your irrefutable proof amounts to the presence of an armed escort. Gee, you wonder why he keeps gish galloping and lobbing ad hominems. Couldn't have anything to do with him knowing his argument significantly lacks any compelling substance. And we are 30 seconds in. We were brought to uh, one of the neighborhoods close to where the attack happened. Escorted by the troops accused of carrying out the attack. According to the narrative, the attack was delivered by shelling and canisters dropped from helicopters. Oh man, you don't even know the official story, and you're trying to refute the claims of dissenters? Well, there goes any potential credibility you might have had later on, because now we know, undoubtedly, that you don't even know what you're defending. A number of residents there... Who are now seeing an approaching contingent of forces who have brutally murdered them for nearly a decade. Uh, probably about ten residents in that neighborhood. And this is, keep in mind, this is about a block and a half away from where the attack was supposedly happened. My guess is that you, like me, are kind of wondering why he didn't ask why they weren't taken directly to the exact location if this is all just a bunch of bullshit. Again, this proves nothing. Let's, uh, skip over the next bit since it's just a cringy scene from the movie The Interview. Then again, calling any scene from a Seth Rogen movie cringy is redundant. Um... Not one of the people that I spoke to in that neighborhood said that they had seen anything or heard anything about a chemical attack on that day. Uh, they said that they were going about their normal business, uh, everything was pretty much business as usual uh, in the neighborhood that day, and they didn't see or hear anything out of the ordinary. Well, that's about right. Or maybe they were away when the attack happened, or, and I know Mr. Ward's gonna say this, they were intimidated into silence by the armed escorts. Shocking. Someone needs to tell these quote-unquote rebels about Craigslist barter, because if they found the right mortar junkie, they could all be rocking dead stock Air Force Ones. Uh, what? Is this supposed to be funny? Her-her <laughs> shoes! Um, I know there's a lot of concern uh, from people that the, the residents being interviewed are plants. They're Russian operatives, or they're staged interviews, or things like that. And so we just randomly went up to different people, uh, no one came up to us, and interviewed probably about 30 or 40 people uh, throughout the town. And consistently, not one person in the entire town that we talked to said that they had seen or heard anything about a chemical attack. His entire argument's not even a refutation, because a refutation is to prove something false or incorrect. However, at most, all this observation does is create a few raised eyebrows. And raised eyebrows are not enough to dismiss something when aside from raised eyebrows, you have nothing. Now maybe they're intimidated by the Assad escorts into towing the Assad narrative, maybe. But just hypothetically, what if there was no chemical attack? Suppose the attack was fabricated by, let's make up a random name, the White Helmets. What would the residents say? 
exactly what they told One America News. They don't need to be coerced into saying it either. Now, I know this doesn't prove anything, but this seems to be the standard of proof for John Ward, so we're using it. So, and again, you're understanding this correctly, not only is an armed escort staring in the face of any resident who gives an interview, but now we know the Syrian army also controls the food, water, clothes, and other supplies. So, basically, anyone that steps out of line is going to be shot the second butthead McOway ending his own company leaves. And their friends and family are also going to be stripped naked and starved to death. I bet they tell the truth. Wait, are you talking about the Clintons or the Assad regime? I mean, that's quite an extraordinary claim, but I'm sure you have some solid evidence that the Assad regime not only knows what its residents are saying at all times, but can ID them virtually anywhere and punish them accordingly. Right? Right? We now take a quick time out for some facts. Finally! Duma, Syria has a population of about 100,000 people. It has been the site of horrific non-stop violence since the Syrian civil war started in 2011. Duma is particularly notable for the fact that it was home to massive anti-government protests, an issue Assad resolved by killing hundreds and maiming thousands more. You know what would be nice for this part of the video? Citations. Seriously, cropping screenshots of a news article isn't hard. Here, let me show you. 11-year-old Hassan Daib is one of the boys featured in the chemical attack video. He was completely fine, but was ushered to the hospital when someone shouted something about a weird smell. Imagine yourself living in a similarly sized city, South Bend, Indiana, for example, the home of Notre Dame. You're all pissed at your oppressive government. You demonstrate. The government responds by dropping chemical weapons on the football stadium for seven straight years. Your proof of the chemical weapons being dropped for seven straight years is... But heretic, his evidence is that he claimed it. That's okay. I'll wait. Then, a short while after one of these attacks that, you know, kills and maims you and your friend's kids, a journalist from a country you've never been to shows up with a death squad, sticks a microphone in your face, points to your nearly decade-long tormentors and says, Hey, these guys didn't hurt you, did they? I know you get the idea and don't need me to curb stomp the point to death, but I'm doing it anyway because ruthless repetition helps drive home how unforgivably pathetic this OAN sham really is. You've proven nothing! You've taken completely circumstantial evidence and drove them to one of theoretically infinite conclusions. That's bad enough, but if you have the rank arrogance to slander someone for not conforming to your basis assertions. Oh, he disagrees with me? He must be a dum-dum. You realize you could basically substantiate any claim with the so-called evidence you provided. Oh, a military escort, so therefore it's in the interest of Assad's regime. Could be used to explain anything. In the words of Karl Popper, a claim which has infinite explanatory power carries the same merit as a claim with none. Come on, John. You should be better than this. Uh, one man said that he was within 50 meters. Within 50 meters of the attack, that didn't happen. And he heard and saw nothing out of the ordinary. When I asked them uh, what they thought uh, the chemical attack was, they told me, all of them, told me that it was staged by the rebels. It was staged by the White Helmets, but given that White Helmet members have been pictured fighting as rebels, their groups overlap. We have to take another time out, because you're now telling me these residents are saying a chemical attack was staged by rebels when literally two f***ing seconds ago you said this. Um, not one of the people that I spoke to in that neighborhood said that they had seen anything or heard anything about a chemical attack on that day. You are 10 minutes into this video. We're already halfway done, and so far you've failed to address your opponent's arguments or provide any arguments to the counter. These Syrians saying rebels staged the attack doesn't contradict that they heard and saw nothing about it, since Pearson Sharp asking them about it might have been the first time they heard about it. They were making an educated guess. It's a third world country, in case you didn't remember. Most of these people don't even have televisions, let alone computers. If they had heard or seen it, they would have specified that the White Helmets staged the attack, since the White Helmets are seen by the Syrians and the Syrian government as either just as bad or worse than ISIS. If you don't want to take the word of Syrians who admit they didn't see anything, that's fine. But don't take their speculation as proof of anything, because it's not. The terrorists uh, staged this attack to get... Uh to get the Western powers to attack the Syrian army and get them off their backs so that they could escape. Um, and that, that, 
That uh, story was told to us by numerous people. Almost as if they had to memorize a script under threat of death. Oh no, keep going, you're doing a great job helping a dictator gas kids to death. Another statement without proof presented as fact. Why are we still debunking this? We know what he's gonna say. May as well just call it. John Ward's credibility. April 18th, 2018. Rest in spaghetti. Meh. May as well be thorough. Um, and uh, so I, I asked them also uh, what they thought about uh, President Bashar al-Assad, because that's also a big question for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, you, you hear people like uh, Boris Johnson and, and other uh, leaders saying that President Bashar is terrorizing his people and that he's uh, being very brutal to them. There's plenty of reasons why the Syrians might support Assad. One being because they're aware that the alternative is ISIS, as in Iraq, the slave markets, like in Libya, or rampant corruption, like in Afghanistan, any secular dictator would look great by comparison. Alternatively, maybe he's actually doing good by the Syrian people. You, yourself, pointed out how he's feeding them. It's also clear they do not like the Syrian rebels. Once again, this doesn't have anything to do with the situation other than the cognitive bias of the Syrians Sharp is talking to. But go ahead, Ward, let's see what you got. They thought that he was great, and they said that, I asked them how they felt about the moderate rebels uh, that they were living under, and they said there, there's no such thing as moderate rebels. They said that the people that they were living under uh, were starving them to death. One man said that he'd been there for the last seven years and was being starved to death. Seven years. For some reason, I feel like that number is relevant. Oh, yeah, now I remember. It's because these people are trying to tell you in coded language to help them not get fucking gassed to death. Fuck. Ah, just like when MSNBC made up racist dog whistling to claim that someone was being racist even though they literally said nothing or implied nothing that even remotely indicated racism. Now you're claiming that because your entire argument has been completely destroyed, that they were just sending coded messages, that there was a deeper meaning in what they said even though you literally didn't even hear what they said and are basing this entirely off of Pearson Sharp's paraphrase. Phrasing. Arguments from dog whistling are the intellectual equivalent of saying, no, that's not what they meant. What they meant was whatever I say because I'm the only one who can correctly interpret the meanings of their words. How disingenuous do you have to be? This is beyond satire at this point, as satire has to be grounded in reality. You're just making stuff up. And he said if anybody complained, you were risking your life. They, they, they'd kill you. They'd kill you and your family for complaining. If anyone complained, they'd kill you? Seriously? I, sitting in front of a computer on the other side of an ocean, watching your goddamn sh show exclusive, have already figured out that they were trying to tell you the real story. You, standing right f***ing there, flexed every neuron in your brain and wound up making what is the most incorrect conclusion possible. And that kindergarten crybaby bitch fest is the level of argumentation we're at now. No, no, they didn't say that. They, they were just sending a coded message. Yeah, and, and the coded message indicates that I was right, and I'm the only one who can understand this coded message. I mean, why don't we just ask the ghost that tells no lies that only you can see and hear while we're at it? Yeah, we already know what he's going to say at this point, and we're already repeating ourselves. They said that uh, there was nothing out of the ordinary, and while they were going about their rounds, suddenly, out of nowhere, they said a bunch of strangers burst into the room screaming that there was a chemical attack. And they started hosing, they brought in, they brought in uh, allegedly victims. Allegedly. And they started hosing them down with water. And so the doctors, you know, they freaked out, and they grabbed hoses, and they started helping and stuff. Alright, I'm gonna ask it. Why is it that you don't trust the Syrian government when they claim that they didn't gas their own citizens, but you do full-heartedly trust the United States government when they say that Syria did, despite the fact that the U.S. has no evidence for their claim, and Syria has evidence that it was a false flag, along with the fact that it would actually be detrimental to Assad for him to have done this? This, with nothing to even gain for doing it. If the narrative of the State Department is correct, then Assad has committed the worst tactical blunder a wartime leader could possibly make. Even if he was motivated by pure sadism, conventional weapons would have killed far more people. Look, John, if you don't believe me or Esso, and you won't listen to Pearson Sharp, then listen to Robert Fisk reporter for super-radical far-right extremist publication, The Independent. He was not escorted by anybody and visited the scene of the alleged chemical attack. What did he find? 
According to Dr. Asim Rahabani, and I'm probably butchering that name, the coughing people from the video were being treated for oxygen deprivation from hiding in poorly ventilated basements from the dust outside. Maybe you remember Pearson Sharp mentioning it being dusty that day. Fisk goes on to corroborate what Sharp would later report about a guy shouting gas and everybody panicking. Fisk also reports much of what Sharp would find later. The residents have no idea about any gas attacks. Remember, Fisk was not escorted by soldiers, so no pulling that, oh, Assad soldiers are real scary bit. It won't work. The fact that one of the witnesses even says that Jaish el Islam, the rebel group previously in control of Duma, actually executed his cousin kind of makes you wonder why Syrians support Assad. Plus, according to Uli Gak, reporter for the German ZDF Hute, and I'm probably butchering those names as well, the attack was most likely staged, and according to some eyewitnesses, rebels could kill people with chlorine gas, film the killing, then blame the Assad government. Yeah. You see, unlike you, John, I can back up my points with facts. No, stop. You waited until eight and a half minutes into your career-ending exclusive to mention that this was all being translated, as in, by a member of your military escort? Ugh, do I really need to say anything? They said the people's eyes, when you get... When you get burned by chemicals, your eyes swell up, they're puffy, you can't breathe, you're coughing. They said the people that came in looked totally normal. No, the doctors didn't say that at all, did they? Your translator said that. For all you know, the doctor said, holy f***ing Christ, get me the f*** out of here. Alright, at this point, he's just putting words in other people's mouths, so I guess I'm done here. What's left to say? He's 17 minutes in. If he isn't going to address any of the opposing argument's points, or present the irrefutable evidence... He promised in the title of this video, he isn't going to. There's no facts here, except what Pearson Sharp reported. Why does John Ward think Assad used chemical weapons when all the facts and reason are to the contrary? Is this kind of thing really worth starting World War III over? Granted, at this point, it's extremely unlikely World War III is going to start from this, thank goodness. But we are in a fourth turning a point in history where civil wars and world wars that change of course of history begin. In the previous fourth turning, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor prompted the United States government to declare war on Japan the very next day. The right spark of history at the right time could ignite a bonfire to consume the world. Given the state's access to nuclear weapons, that isn't a metaphor anymore. Now maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's evidence missed by the Swiss investigators and reporters, and the witnesses are repeating the script, but we don't know, and all evidence is to the contrary. It's also quite instructive how we, who question the narrative of the United States State Department, we have the facts and evidence on our side. They have insinuations and gish galloping. I don't know about you, John, but the world's too important to me to lose it to a nuclear confrontation initiated because of lies. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You probably aren't intentionally lying, except the title of your video. Check out Esoteric Entities in my channels in the description. Questions? Comments? Critique? Who the hell is John Ward? Is he normally this bad? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.